If you had to tell me every poker player's dream, what would it be? I say it's being in late position, looking down at pocket aces, facing an early position open to 25. We three bet to 80. Now surprisingly, the small blind makes the cold call, but what's music to our ears is when the initial raiser rips the stack in there for 300. We rejam to try to isolate, but to no avail, as the small blind comes along for about 500 total. The initial raiser jokingly says that he has aces, which is pretty hard to believe, and then lightheartedly turns over ace nine of clubs. The small blind then turns over the great value aces, pocket fours. The three of us decide to run two full boards for the main pot, so we're going to two full runouts. Let's try to just avoid clubs and fours. That's me. We lock down the first board, even hitting an ace on the right. river for top set. Okay. Yeah, full two. But we're not nearly as lucky on the second board as our opponent wow, flops a four. Twice, huh? We know we're pretty much dead since there's no more aces to come left in the deck. The player with ace nine of clubs relinquishes his hand, and the aces chop a big pot with pocket force. Starting the session with a bang, stay tuned for more action. Want to see me play your favorite hand? Leave it in a comment down below and I'll give it my best shot. While you're there, consider liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and turning on that notification bell for weekly videos. Let's get right into it. For this next hand, we've got king eight of clubs in the vlogger seat on the button, facing a single limp, we make it 30. Big blind comes along and he's run up an absolutely monster stack, so we want to tangle with him, and the limper comes along too. We're going three ways to a flop that comes queen, queen, 10 with one club. Now in this situation, after they both check to me, I think this is a fine c-bet spot with the backdoor flush draw, the backdoor straight draw, and one over. But I decide against two opponents, we're just gonna check and see what develops. We're going with the same gang to a turn that comes an offsuit eight. In this situation, after both players check a second time, we're feeling a lot better about our hand, now having a pair. We bet 65. The big blind gets out of the way, and the limper makes the call. We're going heads up to the final card, which comes an offsuit four. All the draws that weren't there on the turn have totally bricked, and after our opponent checks, I don't think we're going to be able to get called by anything worse, so we check back. We announce we have an eight, our opponent mucks, and we win this small pot. Alrighty, let's try a different king this time, namely, ace king. We've got ace king in early position, we bump it up to 25. The player to our left, who is the same player from the first hand who had ace nine of clubs, min clicks it back to 50. This player has loved to get in the action, is really here to gamble. It folds back to me, we pretty much snap jam as this player only has about 250 left in stack. He calls very quickly, announcing he has pocket kings. We agree to two full boards, so we're really hoping that we could hit an ace across 10 cards. You really got two kings, huh? So we're going twice? Yeah, let's go twice. You got me on the first one. <laughs> we continue to battle this player all night, and the majority of the hands we're going to talk about in this vlog involve him in some way. I heard he owns a NASCAR team, which is pretty cool, so we're going to call him NASCAR man for the rest of the vlog. Our opponent smiles, shows us a king, and then spreads the cards apart to actually show us king four. We had him dominated the whole time and was just messing with us. We scoop a decent sized all in. Alrighty, keeping the session alive, we've got ace clean offsuit in the big blind, facing an under the gun straddle from the NASCAR man. There's two limps, and in this situation, I decide to make it 70. Now, I know this is pretty big, but I really want to push the action and try to isolate the player to our left. We get that wish as NASCAR man makes the call and everybody else folds. We're going heads up, out of position to a flop, comes ace, king, seven with two hearts. We've got top pair, top kicker on a board that really favors our range. We go for some value, and we bet 120. Unfortunately, the NASCAR man lets it go, couldn't push the action in this hand, but we win a decently sized pot for taking it down with a flop c-bet. Alrighty, buckle up. We've got an absolutely monstrous hand incoming. We've got a similar hand to this hand we had in the last hand, but a little downgraded. We've got king queen of clubs in the small blind facing a button straddle. Now in this situation, we decide to open it up to 45. We get three callers and they consist of NASCAR man, the player to his left, and the button straddler. We're going four ways to a flop out of position that comes an absolute dream it comes queen seven four with two clubs we've got top pair a decent kicker and the second nut flush draw in this situation we see bet 100 dollars now to our surprise to make the matter even more interesting nascar man clicks it back to 200 dollars. the rest of the players get out of the way and this is where things get really interesting 
The stack sizes are really, really weird. We both are playing about 1K deep when the hand started. So when he bets 200, I've got about 950 total, counting the 100 I've already got. And the stack sizes are really, really weird. Raising to about 500 doesn't really make a lot of sense as we'd only have about 450 behind. Ripping it all in for 950 doesn't really make a lot of sense because that would let him get away from a bunch of his weaker hands. In this situation, I think he's gonna have a lot more bluffs than not. Because we have king queen of clubs, we don't block the ace high club draw so he could still have that. He could have five six for an open ender or he could even be overplaying a worse queen. I decide because he can have so many more bluffs, we just decide to flat call and set the trap. We make the call, so we're going heads up to the fourth card, which comes in offsuit 10. Doesn't really change the board at all. I guess if he was overplaying queen 10, he got there, but I really find that unlikely. He shouldn't ever have pocket 10, so it really doesn't change the board. We check to our opponent, and he in this situation bets 175. I think in hindsight, this should always be a raise, as the stack to pot ratios are a lot closer now for a jam, and we want to get the money in because we can't risk this hand going check check on the river. Nonetheless, my past self got a little trigger shy, and I can't condone his actions, and he just decided to flat call. Not really proud of it, but that's what I decided to do. We're going heads up to a final card, kind of hoping to improve, even though I still think we have the best hand, but our hand gets even better. Comes an offsuit king, we've got top two pair. We checked for our opponent, who does not disappoint, he bets $500. Now, at the time, I thought that was a really big bet, but in hindsight, it's only about half pot. I mull it over for a little bit and decide on this. The only real draw that could have got there on this river is specifically Ace Jack of Clubs that had the net flush draw and just runner runnered Broadway. He can still have a lot of draws that are just pure bluffing. He can have some top pairs he's overplaying, and if he just has a set, he's got us. So, I'm just kidding. The real conclusion here is that I can't get berated by my comment section again for folding two pair in another massive spot. So we decide to make the call, we ask our opponent if he has a set, and he says no, we turn over our cards and top two pair is good, he throws his cards into the muck, and we scoop an absolutely massive pot. Our opponent said that he actually had 4-7 for flopped bottom two pair, really didn't think we were behind on that flop if our opponent didn't have a set. Nonetheless, we scoop an absolutely gargantuan pot, and we're moving strong into the session. Alrighty, we got the camera rolling a little late for this hand, as I never thought we'd be playing 10-3 offsuit. But here we are. We've got 10-3 offsuit in the big blind. There were two or three limpers, I don't know, checked around. But we flopped top and bottom pair, let's go. We're gonna take a stab at this pot for 15. NASCAR man makes the call, and everybody else gets out of the way. Going heads up to a turn, which comes, mwah, the dream card. It's another 10. We've got 10s full of threes, and we've got 30 for value. NASCAR man calls again, so we're going heads up to the last card, which is a really bad card. It's a four, makes our three not play, makes our boat not so special. We bet 75 for value, and NASCAR man bumps it up to 275. Nothing to do for my opinion except snap call. We've got top boat on the board, and of course our opponent has 10-7 off for the chop. Really unfortunate river. We could have made a much bigger pot, but what can you do? We chop it up, and we're moving on strong. Alrighty, every good story following a climax has a falling action and a resolution. What no better hand to start that decline than pocket jacks under the gun. It's a big game, so we make it 40 to go. The NASCAR man, as well as the big stack in seat eight, both make the call. We're going three ways, the three amigos to a flop that comes ace, nine, five, all spades. We do a spade check and we do indeed have the jack of spades. We see bet 65, which in this position, I don't really like. I think a check call line makes a lot more sense, especially so when NASCAR man bumps it up to 175. The other player gets out of the way, and I sit and think about my options. I conclude on a fold, and I'll tell you why. There's three big reasons. Reason number one, if a spade doesn't hit the turn, we're gonna have to pay off another big bet to keep drawing. Reason number two, our opponent could have us completely crushed even if they do hit a spade, as they could still have the king or the queen of spades. And reason number three, if we do hit our spade and we are good, we may not get paid being out of position as we're probably gonna have to check and they can still have the option of checking back. Nonetheless, we fold, our opponent shows ace queen just for a top pair and it's good. And I think our assessment of the situation was correct. Alrighty, for our next decent punt, we've got ace queen offsuit in orbit later under the gun and we make it 35. The same gang from the previous hand we talked about make the call. So we're going with the same three amigos to a flop out of position that comes 348 rainbow. 
In this situation, with no redraw to basically anything and just two dry overs, I check our option into two opponents. NASCAR man takes a stab at the pot for 25, our oppo other opponent gets out of the way, and for this price, I don't think we can get away from it just yet, so we defend our position and call the 25. Heads up to a turn, which comes the 10 of clubs, doesn't really change the board at all. We check, and again our opponent bets 25. Given an even better price this time, I don't think there's any way we can get away from it just yet. We've still got a lot of equity with two dry overs against a single pair. We make the call, really hoping to improve, really hoping for a big face card, which it is, let's go! Except it's the wrong face card, it's an offsuit king, we do not make a pair. I consider leading this card actually, as we should have a lot more kings here than our opponent. But we decide to give up and check, our opponent bets 200, and in this situation, it's a pretty easy fold. Nice hand, nice hand. All right, for the last hand we're gonna talk about this vlog, we've got pocket tens under the gun, and we make it 25. NASCAR man to our left wasn't at the table for this hand, so the action has calmed down a little bit. We bring the telephones across the table and we get two callers. We're going three ways out of position to a flop that comes ace, jack, nine, rainbow. We're gonna have a much bigger range advantage on this board being under the gun. However, into two people, pocket tens is gonna be dominated a lot of the time and considering the player next to us is short stacked, I don't really think we can get away with a C bet here. We decide to check and it checks all the way around. We're going three ways with the same gang into a turn, which comes in offsuit eight. Now in this situation, with a pair open-ended, I decide to do take our equity and bet 50. Unfortunately, the player to our left with a shorter stack rips the stack into the middle for about 200. The next player in line folds, and I don't really want to draw for a 4x raise with 10 outs, so I decide to relinquish my hand as well. We make a couple more good punts, and we rack up not too long after that. Alrighty, that's gonna conclude this session, guys. We were into the game for about $1,000, out of the game for $1,220, booking a win of about $220 over the course of six and a half hours. We stayed a little bit later than we should, but we were having a great time playing at the Daytona Beach Racing and Card Club. Thank you so much to them for letting me film in your room. If you're ever in the area, be sure to check them out. I'm a little conflicted as to how to continue making these vlogs. In the past, it was kind of me talking about where I was in the beginning and then getting into the poker from there, but it's shown that the audience retention doesn't really support that. I want to stay true to the initial channel idea, so I'm probably going to end up moving all of my cinematic detail to the end of the video. For this vlog, I'm up in Michigan visiting my dad, and my girlfriend and I took a walk around this island park, which we also call the Duck Park. Thank you guys for joining me today at the Alpena Michigan Duck Park, and as always, keep your body healthy, keep your mind healthy. This is Runner Runner Poker. Have a good one.